and welcome to another edition of the Port Clinton Middle School Video Magazine TV Show. I'm one of your hosts, Kirsten Cuevas. And I'm Kaysen Cornell. Thanks for joining us. There's been, a lot of, there's been a lot going on and we can't wait to share it with you. So let's start today's show with a story about the National Junior Honor Society Ceremony. Cere ceremony. Our very own Kirsten Cuevas took the time out of her own induction to capture this story. Hello, my name is Kirsten Cuevas and I'm at the National Junior Honor Society Ceremony. Today I will be inducted into National Junior Honor Society along with my fellow students. I'm going to catch up with a few of them after the ceremony. I'll see you then. Good morning and welcome to the 9th Annual Port Clinton Middle School National Junior Honor Society Induction Ceremony. It is my pleasure to welcome all of you here today. The National Junior Honor Society is a prestigious organization intended to recognize the work and determination of students. and I'm back here at the reception after National Junior Honor Society. I'm here with two students that got inducted, Isabella Cross and Karen Dix. How does it feel to be in National Junior Honor Society? Pretty great. A great honor. How many years have you guys been in it? Three. Three. Hi, I'm here with two seventh graders, Olivia Morez and Bella Cuevas. And Bella Cuevas happens to be my sister. So Olivia and Bella, how does it feel achieving this accomplishment and being in the National Junior Honor Society? Uh, it feels awesome. It feels good and great. So how many years have each of you guys been in the National Junior Honor Society? Uh, only once. This is my first year. Well, I can't wait to see your guys' accomplishments next year, and I hope you guys get it next year, too. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm here with Mia Sanchez and our principal, Mrs. Sanchez, and I'll be asking them a few questions. Mia, how does it feel being in um, National Junior Honor Society this year? It feels great. <laughs> Now, Mrs. Sanchez, how does it feel seeing all the students walk across the stage and giving them their certificate? I think it's one of the most proud days that we have here at Port Clinton Middle School to see so many students who are successful in their classrooms and earning grades that represent their hard work. Do you, how, do you feel, how did you feel when giving your daughters their certificates? Did you feel proud or anything else? It's a super special moment for me to be able to celebrate that both as a principal and a parent with both of the girls. So I appreciate you noticing. Thank you. And Mia, was this your first year, your second year, or your third year? This was my third year. Good job, Mia. Thank you, too, for joining me today. It was a really great day, and I had a lot of fun. Congratulations to all of this year's inductees. Besides excelling in the classroom, PCMS students excel on the basketball court as well. Parker Fanning has a story about our very successful 7th grade girls basketball team. Our 7th grade girls basketball team had an exciting season as they made it all the way to the SBC championship. They played a very good Margarita team. PC came out with a, some strong defense and finished the first quarter tied. At halftime, they were only down by 5. But coming out of halftime, Margarita came out the locker room strong while PC started to struggle. When the final whistle blew, the Redskins had a tough loss, 47-29. It was a great team effort, and they have a lot to be proud of, finishing runner-up in the SBC Bay Division. Great job to Evelyn, Clarissa, Dakaria, John D. Reagan, Angel, Alyssa, Trissell, and Coach Sifke. Best of luck as eighth graders. Great job, girls. You just learned that PCMS students are not only smart, but athletic, too. Plus, they are musically gifted as well. Jaden Hefflinger caught up with a few choir students to learn more about this talented group. Over 85 PCMS students participate in choir. There are three concerts per year, one in December, spring, and May. Mr. Watts likes to help them by giving them warm-ups, reading rhymes, and sight singing. And if they have time, they will rehearse for their concerts. Today I'm with two seventh graders, Maddie and Cameron. Um, Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> um, what's your favorite part about being in choir? Uh, my favorite part is probably doing concerts because it's the most interactive part of choir. I like like practicing our songs and like the when we first get them, hearing them and like listening and like seeing like the like different new rhythms and stuff that we get to like sing. Um, 
what have you learned about, in, about being in choir this year? Uh, we learn like a lot about dynamics and stuff, but one of the things is, one of the more important things are like, better things that we learn is like, when you hold out long notes, you have to keep the air spinning, you can't just like keep it flat, I guess. Um, another part of choir that we do a lot is like, it's called, he calls it um, music theory, it's like notes and staffs and everything to do with like the musical, more musical, like uh, instrumental part of choir, so I like that a lot too. We learned a lot about that this year too. Um, what would you say your favorite kind of music is to listen outside of choir? Probably just like the most recent songs that come out. I mean, this is what on the radio, so that's what I'll listen to. <laughs> um, well, I mean, I listen to like a lot of music, but they're kind of like the opposites, but like 80s rock or Disney music. <laughs> so Mr. Watts, his favorite part about choir is teaching what's the difference between uh, traditional choir music and karaoke. What's your favorite karaoke song? Um, probably just something by Billie Eilish because I just she's my favorite artist, so that's what I'll pick. Um, I guess like Disney music since I like Disney, so yeah, any Disney song really. Well, thank you two for being here, and I hope you have great luck on your next concert. <laughs> Thanks, Jaden. And since we're featuring the choir program as part of our fine arts off offerings, it makes sense to talk about a racing club that started here at PCMS, Clay Club. Here's with the story is Emily Roberts. A new and exciting opportunity was offered to students this year to allow them to showcase their creativity, Clay Club. Middle school art teacher Mrs. Davis started the club for students who wanted to explore this fun art media. Sixteen students signed up for Clay Club and they meet twice a month during their meetings. Students got their work area set up and Mrs. Davis demonstrates some of the techniques for working with clay. After that, when the fun begins, as students work on forming the clay into works of art. Here are some of the pictures of their finished products. This is a great opportunity for students to express their artistic side and have lots of fun in the process. Thank you, Mrs. Davis, for giving students this opportunity. Thanks, Emily. Clay Club looks like a lot of fun. Something else that's fun is catching the latest movie. Here with a review of the very popular Aquaman. On December 21st, a new movie opened up. It's a story about a boy born of a surface dweller and the Queen of Atlantis. The boy was destined to bring the surface world and the underwater kingdom together once again. During his quest to do this, Aquaman encounters many obstacles including his brother Orm, sea monsters, and a giant snake-like figure guarding his father's trident. Along this journey, he finds his mom, who they had previously thought was dead, and then she joins them to help fight his power-hungry brother. With a newly secured trident, Aquaman and all the sea creatures unite and fight underwater powers and win. He dethrones Orm and is now the true king of the sea. With a 68 million opening weekend, Aquaman topped the box office for Warner Bros. Pictures. Movie reviewers have said this about Aquaman. Like Wonder Woman, this adventure marks a whole move in the right direction for the Justice League and DC Extended Universe. So if you're looking for a great adventure movie, look no further than Aquaman. I'm Noah Zimmerman for the PCMS Video Magazine. Back to you in the studio. Fleet 7 students read an interesting book this year with a very interesting name. Alcman Does My Shirts. Do you remember doing that last year, Caitlin? I do. It was it was a long book. It really was. It was like, I remember. About, it was, it was like, the characters and the setting on Alcatraz was like. Yeah. That was probably my favorite book we read last year. It was. Okay. Dylan Kester has more on that story. Have you ever wondered what it was like when mobsters rule? Fleet 7 students got to learn all about this as they recently read the book, Al Capone Does My Laundry. This story tells about the boy named Moose Flanagan and his family who have just moved to Alcatraz Island so that he's, his father can take a job as a prison guard and his sister Natalie has to be special school for autism. Moose misses his old baseball team and he struggles for recognition from his new school. 
Uh, gradually, Moose adjusts on his life from Alcatraz, even finding ways to help Natalie fit in with her other children on the island. After Flanagan's tried unsuccessfully to enroll Natalie in the special school, Moose secretly writes a note to Al Capone, asking him to help Natalie, and a few weeks later, Natalie was accepted in the brand new school for older autistic children of, to the delight of the entire Flanagan family. It was able to interview the seventh graders that participated in this thing. Let's take a look at that. Today I thought it would have been interesting to interview a student, Michael Beckley, seventh grader, about Al Capone Does My Shirts. And I will be talking to him about what his favorite character is, what he did on a cereal box, and his favorite part about this unit. So starting off, what was your favorite character? Pro uh, probably Al Capone, but I didn't do Al Capone, I did Joseph Messino. Um, Al Capone is one of my favorite, uh, uh, sorry. You just like redo it all, please. Okay. Um, he's my favorite character be because well, I've learned a lot about him from the book and uh, online, but the character would Okay, interesting. What is your favorite thing about the cereal box? Probably the uh, probably the front part because it shows a picture of him. He tells a little bit about him, his age, when he died, and all the good stuff about him. Last question. What was your favorite part about this unit? Probably reading the book. It's a whole new experience for me uh, about that time period and what was going on and how... They were how life back was back then. Good. Uh, I remember last year. The favorite part about this unit for me was probably the cereal box, just because we got to make it, take time out of our day, and like construct it by ourselves. And thanks to Mrs. Head and Mr. Ruth, and this was a fun project. In addition to all the great things we love about PCMS, many students also love their pets. We thought it would be nice to feature pets of both students and staff. So here they are, the pets of PCMS. Right from the start, couldn't pull us apart, it just works. Nobody else ever gets me as well on this earth. Like rock and roll, marshals and tellies, mac and cheese, PBs and jellies. Some things are better together and that's you and me. Dude, I love you, bro. I love you, man. I love you. You're my brother from another, another mother. You are my favorite. I'm not ashamed to admit because I do, do, I do, I do. I love you, bro. I love you, man. I love you. You're my holy. No one knows me like you know me. One thing that students start to become more aware of in, of the middle school is fashion. Jada Sullivan has some tips for us. Going to a middle school is like entering a whole new world. Here are some tips to help you find your style. Tip one, pay attention to what other people are wearing. You don't want to exactly copy anyone else's style, but you should pay attention to what other people are wearing and see what you like. Tip two, know what looks good on you. Dark colors can make you appear slimmer, and a belt will make your waist appear smaller. Tip three, find inspiration in magazines and, and online. Check out fashion magazines, style blogs, p boards, and pictures of people to get ideas of kind of styles. Tip four, be willing to experiment sometimes. The only way to know if something looks good on you is just to try it. Middle school is all about finding yourself. Don't be afraid to experiment what you look like. And above all else, be yourself. Thanks, Jada. I did the most important thing is to just be yourself and develop your own individual style. And someone that has a great individual style is our staff member, Mrs. Norton. Instead of our regular teacher feature, we're highlighting one of our other valuable staff members. Mrs. Norton fills many roles here at PCMS. Jaden and Emily sat down with her for a little chat. Let's roll the footage now, please. 
on this episode of video, the video magazine, uh, we're gonna be doing <laughs> Teach Your Future, and today's staff member is going to be Miss Norton. So tell us about yourself. How long have you been working? At I have been here 28 years. Um, I live on Catawba. I have nine cats and a dog. And what else can I tell you? That's about it. Uh, Ms. Lauren, what are your jobs here at PCMS? I am the school librarian and I co-teach the Explorers class. What is the best part about working here? The best part about working here are the students. Being around you, listening to you guys, uh, the excitement you bring to me. I'm very blessed. Students look up to you. Do you have any advice for the ones going into high school? Um, what I would say is to respect yourself and to do your best every day. Well, that's it for this episode. It's a pleasure for you to be here. Thank you, Mrs. Thank Lennon. you very much. You keep doing an awesome job. Thanks. Our next story features water, speed, and a whole bunch of awards. It's our own middle school swim team. Carly Blessing, one of the top swimmers from the team, has more on their spectacular season. The middle school girls swimming and diving team remained undefeated for the second year in a row as they once again clinched the SBC championship. Here's a clip of when the scores were announced. In fourth place, Huron with 242. Third place, Oak Harbor with 280 points. Runner up on the girls' side with 497.5 points, Perkins. Also, the girls' team champion with 560 points, Port Clinton. We beat the runner up team, Perkins, for the championship, and our team is coached by Danny Diaz. The team had a lot of talented swimmers, and Cami Perriott and Zoe Barr led the team with four first place finishes. In addition, Camry Perriott broke two records, the 50 fly and the 100 free. Several other members of the team also came really close to breaking some other records as well. We celebrated our successful season with a banquet at the middle school cafeteria on January 28th. For me, the highlight of the season was keeping up our winning streak. And the thing I'll miss most about middle school swimming is how short our season is compared to the high school. But I'm already looking forward to swimming at the high school level next year. Thanks to all of our coaches and all my teammates for making this season so great. And while the swimmers showed their skills in the water, another group demonstrated what they could do on the mat. Our very own wrestling team reporter, Noah Eurissa, sat down with Kaysen and CJ Garza. Let's take a look. Welcome, CJ and Kaysen Cornell. Wrestling requires discipline, strength, flexibility, and mental toughness. I've been wrestling since third grade, and Kaysen Cornell and CJ Garza have pretty much been there the entire time. And uh, some questions I'd like to ask are, what made you start and do you think you're wrestling next year? Uh, I just started because I didn't have anything to do in the winter time. And yes, I will be wrestling next year. I started because I used to do it all the time. And then I stopped for a couple of years and I got back into it. And yes, I will be doing it next year. Oh, good. How do you think we did as an overall team this season? And what do you think we could improve on? I mean... Most of us weren't that good because it was like their first year. But there were some that were good. But as an overall team, I'd say that we weren't good. Yeah, we were pretty bad. So <laughs> well, yeah. yes, you did. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we did too good at overall. Um, but I could improve on taking more shots when I'm wrestling. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> I could take yeah. some more shots too. Um, what was the best experience you had this season? It wasn't my arm, I can tell you that. <laughs> yeah. What about you, CJ? Uh, probably just got in the tournament, so it was pretty fun. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you think was <laughs> most challenging, either during a match or during practice? The most challenging during practice was probably conditioning, because that sucked, you know? Yeah. I was going up against competitors that were, like, bigger than me and stronger than me, so I had to use, like, Strength and skill at the same time. I find the tired, tired. I find that the diet is the oh, like worst that thing. That too. <laughs> yeah. Conditioning. Um, well, thank you guys for joining us, and hopefully we see you next year. 
Right. Our next story features a fun week that took place the week before Christmas break. Leadership Council sponsored a spirit week with many f fun theme days. Elias Guerrero is here to tell us more. Hi, my name is Elias. I'm here to tell you about Spirit Week that took place weeks before Christmas break. It was sponsored by Leadership Council and was done simply as a way to spread holiday cheer. On Monday, students wore their best Santa hats. Tuesday was Polar Express Pajama Day and students was, were treated to free hot chocolate. On Wednesday, a lot of red and green was sent. We participated in Christmas Color Day. Thursday was dressed as your favorite Christmas holiday character day, and the week ended on Friday with Ugly Christmas Sweater Day. These days are really fun, and I participated in a lot of them. I know the high school does similar theme days, and I'm really looking forward to participating in these next year. As well, thank you to Leadership Council for planning this. That was a fun week, and once we came back, we thought it would be interesting to see what kind of gifts students received. So Kaysen set out to find out. So Christian, you want to tell me what your worst and favorite Christmas gifts were? Um, my uh, favorite Christmas gift was probably my uh, PC. And worst was probably, probably underwear, yeah. <laughs> my favorite Christmas gift was my dog, Tink. Um, she's a boxer. And my worst Christmas gift was Probably these old granny shoes my grandma gave me. <laughs> what was your favorite Christmas gift? Uh, mine was probably a hoverboard, and then my worst was probably... Uh, <laughs> I don't really know if I've had a worst, really. My favorite Christmas gift was football tickets to a Michigan football game. My least favorite gift was socks that were too big for me. Uh, my worst was probably a sweater. And that was like terrible, but I still wore it and acted like I loved it. But favorite would have to be uh, probably the the cab tickets with my yeah. uncle, and uh, I got to see LeBron, and that was pretty fun. So yeah, thank you. Well, there you have it. People's worst and favorite Christmas gifts. Back to you. We featured our successful 7th grade girls basketball team in a previous story, but what some people don't understand is that hours and hours of practice that goes into any sport. Chance Sayre is a part of the 8th grade basketball team and he's going to give us the inside scoop about basketball practices. Boys basketball season has come to an end and lots of good memories were made this year. But instead of focusing on wins and losses, I want to share a little information about the hard work that took place before the games. Yes, I'm talking about basketball practices. As eighth grade team manager, I get to see firsthand what goes on at practice. The boys coaches this year were Kane Minnick and Zach Ruth. A typical practice consists of stretches, Oklahoma drill, which is a three on two, a shooting drill, and practice plays. Some of the fun things we do are catch and shoot drills with the guns and scrimmage and playing knockout. According to player Elias Guerra, the best part about practice is playing knockout and the worst part is when we have to run killers. But without the hard practices, the team would not have the success it had this year. I strongly recommend playing basketball, whether competitive or just for fun. Now get out there and practice. Our last story features a field trip 8th grade students took to learn more about the Holocaust and the story of Anne Frank. Now let's go to the reporter, Milena Williams. Eighth graders are currently learning about the Holocaust and Anne Frank. In order to have a better understanding of this topic, students had the opportunity to travel to the Sandusky Library, where there is a traveling exhibit set up through the month of February. This exhibit is sponsored by the Lang Trust with the support of the Center for Peace through Understanding. It tells a powerful story of a young girl hiding from the Nazis during World War II. Through photographs, letters, and her diary. The goal of the exhibit is to encourage people to think about Anne Frank and the world she lived in, which included anti-Semitism, discrimination, and persecution. But on the positive side, it also tells a story of resistance to these evils and the powerful impact she had. I really enjoyed learning about this topic, and I hope everyone else has the opportunity to visit the exhibit. Well, that concludes another edition of the PCMS Video Magazine. We hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed putting it together. 
You can catch these stories online anytime at the Park Clinton City School website. Simply click the videos link from the home page and then click Port Clinton Middle School. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next show. Bye.